Howdy, everybody. Uh, my life continues to suck. Uh, for a few days there, I felt like like I had a little bit of uh, hope. I, it, it, call it a, like a... Uh, Uh, how do I want to say this? Like, I, I don't want to be like all spirit, like a premonition or anything, but I started getting these, these good vibes that my life was going to improve, you know, sometime going forward as much as the next three weeks. When I say improve going forward, it's not immediate, but like somewhat down the road. Uh, so with that being said, the reason I don't like talking to certain people is because it seems like every time you open your mouth, even if it's, if it's the most subtle thing, it always seems to be turned against you. And that happened today, tonight. <clears throat> so I, I work very far away from where my mother is in the rehab center because of her broken hip and her dementia. And she calls nonstop, calls nonstop. She might not call for a couple hours because she's drugged up or sleeping, and then she'll call you every five, ten minutes. And she's in, she says she's in so much pain, and she's her voice is very broken up and very fragile, and uh, just just we're all handcuffed. You know what can we do? I, you know, I've got to go to work. Unfortunately, there's medical professionals there. The the power of attorney. He he's here today, and he. I looked at the login book. He was there at eleven twenty-five. Nobody ever signs out, you know. So I have no idea how long he stayed, but he has a hell of a lot more time in his life than I do. So she's constantly calling me, and then I find that you know, he, according to him, she calls him all the time too. I don't know who she calls more, but. It's always the same squeaky, breaking up voice. I'm in so much pain. Call somebody, call somebody, call somebody. I have to pee. I got to go to the bathroom. I, you know, they put me in a chair and they left me in this chair. Now I, I want to go back to bed. I got to go to the bathroom. Gary, please call somebody. Please, you know, when your mother is in pain and she's, you know, she's, and I'm 35 miles away. They have her on cycles. I don't remember the exact. Uh, I think it's every four hours they give her some painkillers. But with all the other medicines she's on, they're trying to regulate that. And part of that, you know, her brain's already like messed up. When they give her painkillers, her brain gets more screwed up in the process. And uh, so I come back home tonight after making sure she was fed and had some nourishment in her, and the, uh, he's sound asleep, sound asleep, I was going to go in there and communicate with him, let him know about all the phone call, he's sound asleep, so I just go out to Lanai, plug in my laptop, then when I see him moving about, I come in, and I'm starting to talk to him about all the phone calls, he says he's getting them too. And and right as we're talking about it, I said, yeah, she was, like, pretty desperate. And when I was there, the nurse was there and said she's scheduled for the next pill at 7 p.m. So she was in a lot of pain then and just kept calling me nonstop, you know. And you you want to help her? But you're handcuffed, you know. They're doing it for a reason. So, you know, I called up there, asked for the nurse's station for her room number, and then um, talked to the guy, the nurse that was there earlier when I was feeding her, real nice guy. And I said, man, you know, my phone's blowing up left and right. Can you please do something for the pain, give her some Tylenol, Advil, or something, you know, and until you guys give her the painkillers at seven. <clears throat> and, uh, 
he said, yeah, no problem. And I'm, I'm real, when I talk to these people, I'm extremely polite. I don't go in there like a threatening person like other people. I always try to kill him with kindness. That's how I feel you should approach things first. Well, um, I communicate that. And then uh, I'm told by the power of attorney, you need to lay off them. So I'm like, You've never heard me talk to him one time. I don't call him 15 times a day. So that there pissed me to frick off. Pissed me off big time. Because I'm nice and polite to people. But here we are once again. Secondary stepchild. My mom's got to call me and I'm supposed to just lay off not try and get her any medical attention, make sure she's viewed. I will tell you this, and I've said it before in past videos, hospitals take care of your, your, your family members way better than rehab facilities. They're more attentive. They have a bigger budget. They can do that. Rehab facilities don't. My mom's like, she's like, the train has left the station. Her brain's not working. Plus, she has a broken hip with a metal rod in it. So I'm sure she is in pain. Plus, they, they're they already working her for rehab daily. I don't know if they do it once a day or twice a day. I'm sure that's very painful. I'm not there to witness it because I have a job. I'm supposed to have a job. I have to have a job. And I still can't take care of myself. So I'm told to lay off the rehab. Lay off the rehab. He doesn't even know how many times I called. He just wakes up from a groggy sleep and thinks like I'm blowing up the, their phone every five minutes, which is just bullshit. It just, it's like, you see what I'm dealing with every day, people? This is what I got to deal with. And I'm supposed to be excited about life? Come on, man. 